Aaron Judge made a comment, and, and Brett Gardner is the one who actually started it. He had two home runs yesterday, and he said, we're going we're gonna to break the home run record from last year, which was 267. And then Gardner said, oh, yeah. Uh, Judge said, absolutely. I mean, with, with the big boys we have, we're going to do it. I think they will. I mean, that's the way the sport is. But I'm not quite sure that that is the ticket to a championship. And I think that one of the concessions to what I'm saying, what a lot of people are saying, is that the Yankees signed D.J. LeMayu. D.J. LeMayu is not your typical Yankee player. He's not a whale and bail guy. He's not a launch angle guy. He's a guy who's won a batting title, takes the ball to right field. Now, he will hit his share of home runs, especially because of right field at Yankee Stadium. But if you want to take a look, and Reggie Jackson said this, not Michael Kay, during the hour we had after the game was rained out the other day, he said, you got to change the way you hit in the postseason, in big moments. He said, our guys don't do that. He said, we have to learn to do that. Marcus Timms is supposedly trying to teach them that. But if you change the way you hit, Don, then you are not going to break the home run record, but it might be better for the long haul. Now, for a 162-game season, you hit the most home runs, and they have, they have very good pitching and great relievers. They're going to win a lot of games. But in the postseason, when you have the best pitchers opposing you, and most home runs come on mistakes from pitchers. You're not going to get as many mistakes. You're not going to get as many home runs. You've got to make contact. You've got to move runners. You've got to drive them in. I don't think the home run record is a thing that will propel them to a championship. I just don't. No, well, unless you can make the adjustment going from the regular season to the postseason. Can you do that? Can you? Are, we're going to bash our way, similar to the Red Sox last year. Red Sox bashed their way to a division title. And then they got to the playoffs, and they still used their offense, but they also made adjustments, had quality at bats. Can you make that change? I don't think you can, because the Red Sox even were different during the regular season. Well, they were more of a contact hitting team. They didn't strike out as much as the Yankees did. Right, but they're also a team that didn't like he hit the least amount of home runs the no, year before. Right. So even though they added J.D. Martinez, they still weren't the home run hitting team that the Yankees are going to be. When mm -hmm. they were a second year with Stanton and Judge, a lot of these guys are home run hitters. But what I'm asking is. In that game four against the Red Sox, when everybody was looking to hit the game-winning home run, a base hit would have done the trick there, right? Would have, would have had Kimbrell unravel. And I thought that Sanchez and Stanton, if memory serves, had at-bats where I don't think they really had quality at-bats. Sanchez came close to hitting it out. But maybe if you just make contact, hit the ball up the middle, get a single, extend the game. That's when the Yankees were always at their best when they won four out of five championships is pass the baton, right? I'm going to get on base. The next guy's going to do it. If the next guy doesn't do it, the guy after that will do it. Not just waiting for the bases clearing home run. You know, the old Earl Weaver, we're going to hit three-run home runs. He didn't want little pesky guys on the base paths getting thrown out. I'm not saying you got to steal or bunt. But what's the matter with a good quality two-strike choke up? hit the ball the other way, move the runner over kind of at-bats that can help you win and, low-scoring baseball games. And it could be done. Again, Reggie Jackson, a first ballot Hall of Famer, who struck out more than any player in the history of baseball, his career strikeouts. He said that he would put the ball in play to the shortstop in big moments. So if a guy who led the majors in strikeouts, when strikeouts were not cool, if he was doing that, why can't other people do it? It can right. be done. Well, because, it can be done. Can I ask a stupid question? Sure. We're is, used to it. Excuse me? Nothing. Is there, a, is there a situation in which you can be a team that mostly hits home runs, but throughout the regular season, based on pitching situations, say, tonight we're going to play this game differently. So you can start to get yourself in that mentality because when you get to the playoffs and everything tightens up, it just seems to be such a disadvantage to be that well, team. I just think the analytics play against that because to the analytics, not caring if you strike out, your, your approach at 0-2 is the same at 3-0. And I always was taught, Michael, you the same protect thing. The when play. you played, you know, protect the plate. You just changed your bat. When you, I, what, you I would behind. literally swing at a ball six feet over my head if there are two strikes. That, and Atlantic, a, analytics does, misses that. And analytics will not tell you because they don't include pressure. So the Yankees go to the playoffs every single year and always get eliminated in the playoffs. 
And every year, the analytics would say, keep doing what you're doing. Right. Because it wouldn't account for what right. the playoffs are. This is where we get into the whole baseball, a game has heart, a game has a heartbeat, all pulse, all those things. You, you can't account for that. It's not the same thing. And, and I, again, I repeat this, and I always say it a lot, just being around baseball as much as I have been, that home runs come off mistakes. Very rarely does a pitcher make his pitch, and the guy hits a home run. Maybe Yankee Stadium every now and then, you have a nasty slider down and away, a righty reaches out, short right field porch, it goes away. But it, it doesn't happen that often. I think you've got to adjust. And in answer to your question, Peter, I don't think you do it from game to game. It has to be a mindset. And I'm not saying give up at bats. I'm not saying change your launch angle. But at least with two strikes, change what yeah, you're doing. That's all you're asking. And, and the analytic crowd, I'd love to debate somebody if anybody wants to come on. You know, I'd rather have a strikeout than a double play. But that's not the only thing that could happen. You get a sack fly. A guy could boot a ball. If you strike out, nothing good could happen. Rather, would you rather have a strikeout than a double play if there's, the bases are loaded and there are no out? And the double They'd play, rather have a strikeout. Well, then get the run? Yes. Because they but there's they some games when that's the whole, that's it. That's right. all you got. Yeah, but, but, but the logic is, if I'm going to protect the plate with two strikes, if I'm going to change my approach and just make contact, my odds of hitting a home run are reduced dramatically. Yep. If I'm thinking about hitting the home run, yeah, I'm going to strike out. That's the negative byproduct. But my chance of hitting home run are way up. So what, is, what did Mark Teixeira always say? Hit over the shift. Instead of, you know, dragging one down with nobody sitting there at third base, my idea is I'm approaching every at-bat, launch it out of the ballpark, then it doesn't matter where everybody is situated. Yes, I'm going to raise my chance of striking out, but the idea is to hit the home run. Hit them where they ain't was the old story. Hit them where they ain't is a lot easier when you're hitting it out of the ballpark. Nobody can catch it. So that's their logic. So you're looking at it the other way of you want to make contact. They just yeah, want to hit the home run. Because that idea, though it sounds great, hit it over the shift. If you have an amazing year doing that, amazing, one of the best in baseball, you did it 40 times. If, if, you, if you were amazing at it, right. you did it 40 times. What happened all the other times? Sounds great, but hitting it the other way, being able to just Tony Gwynn it and choke up and hit a little base hit, I just don't, I, I don't get yeah, it. Yeah, but, but the thing is, is that we're talking about players. One of them just signed a 13-year, $330 million contract. They're batting under 250. So they're looking at, I've got a 25% chance of making contact, but of those 25%, I've got over a 50% chance of hitting it out. Because what's the game become? Walks and home runs. Extra base hits. Nobody wants a single anymore. It's almost worthless to most of them. So how many extra base hits? We're, we're paying people on on-base percentage plus slugging. Total bases. These are the things they're looking at. So, yeah, they're, they're hit. Yo, Gary Sanchez is starting playoff games batting 170, which means he gets a hit 17% of the time. But how much of that 17% are home runs, Michael? 50? Right. They, they 45? Lo they look at damage. Yeah. And I get it. I understand it. And over the long stretch of the season, you are going to win a lot of games by hitting a lot of home runs. But I think the, the short postseason series changes the way the game is played. And, you know, you could go back to 2017, though. Yankees played the same way, and they went to the seventh game of the ALCS. But remember, they didn't score that many runs in game six and seven when they had to because they were looking to hit home runs off Justin no, Verlander. they were shut down. And they just couldn't do it. So there's got to be a way to squeeze out a run here and there. So I agree with what Aaron Judge said. They are going to hit more home runs. But the question is, will they do the other things as well?